Hello, everybody, and welcome to your weekly Your Money Matters video. It's uh, me and Clint Lee here. Unfortunately, boys, uh, Angela Giraud is not here today. She's on vacation. I know you're going to miss her badly, uh, but she'll be back next week. Uh, Clint, we are going to be talking today about a um, bit, bit of a change of direction for us. Uh, we've become known as bearish and, uh, you know, sort of against uh, risk in, in this environment. Um, but today we want to talk about how to handle it if you decide you want to do that. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the best way to look at it, you know, people talk about it as if you want to dance, go ahead and dance. Just make sure you know when the tune is about to end. Uh, when there's only a few bars left and then you want to sit down. Uh, so today we want to talk about what those few bars would contain from the perspective of looking uh, at the stocks that you hold, but also the stock market as a whole. So Clint, um, what have you got? You, I know you have a couple of indicators you like to use when you know it's time to sit down, take your profits back off uh, and keep your powder dry for the next uh, leg up. So what you got? Right. So yeah, similar to the analogy you just made it, I recall Back in mid-2007, right before the financial crisis hit, uh, Citigroup's CEO made a similar comment. He basically said, if the music's still playing, we're going to keep dancing. Uh, but as alluding to some of the, the, the troubles, the issues, the, the cracks in the mortgage market and, and the leveraged loan space at the time, uh, was starting to show up, but no one was really taking defensive action because there was still money to be made. You know, investors were still demanding the securities. And so, you know, they want to keep supplying those securities and, and keep making profits. And yeah, it's kind of a similar situation now to where the, the, the music in this case is the stock market and the stock market keeps grinding its way higher. And mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing more and more investors just wanting to, to keep on dancing along with it. Um, and, and that's okay. You know, you want to start to look for and keep an eye out for warning signs that the music's about to be cut off and, you know, I'll show you a couple of charts here that I'm keeping a close eye on as sort of the, the early warning indicators that we could see another decline. Now, the first one is basically looking at stocks that are in an uptrend. So I'm going to show a chart right here. The black line on this chart is the S&P 500 index. And this bluish shaded area below is the percent of stocks in an uptrend. Now, I'm defining that as the percent of stocks that are trading above their 50-day moving average. Now, this goes back to, to late 2019. and what I'll highlight is, is one warning sign this gave prior to the sell-off or right as the sell-off was commencing. So we had the S&P 500 in this uptrend and we had this uptrend indicator uh, showing participation of about 70% or so. So about 70% of stocks were up trading above their 50-day moving average. Mm -hmm. Now look at the final leg of this trend that I've highlighted with the red circles here. You have the S&P making this final high before the sell-off but the percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average was only 50%. So while 70% before, 50% uh, at that time, so that shows that deteriorating breadth. And, and breadth is just measuring, you know, how many, there's a number of ways to look at it, but how many stocks are participating in that uptrend. So this is something I'd keep a close eye on. You can see in this most recent rally, we've had this big surge in, in stocks participating, trading above their 50-day. Their um, and so, as a market, if, if we keep grinding higher here and, and this indicator starts working its way lower, that would be one potential red flag. So, so let me let me just pause you there before you go on to your next indicator. Um, I think the, the important point there is that um, an astute investor could look at that volume indicator uh, and see it diverging from the upward trend in price. And that's the, that's the critical thing, that um, if you're just looking at price, um, you're missing a big part of the picture because the not only the volume of trading, but but the number of stocks that are, are advancing as opposed to maybe stalling into consolidation or, or even falling, that's a critical indicator uh, to to be aware of for, for the reasons you set up. But the thing is that that can start to show up before the turn happens, uh, and so whether it's an individual stock or the index as a whole, um, you got to add that piece of it into it uh, in order to make sure that you don't get caught when the music stops. Uh, so you had another indicator you wanted to share. Right. Yeah. So to your point, price in, in the context of other things that are going on. And one of those other things you can pay attention to is the VIX index. Now, we talked about this last week as well. This is commonly referred to as, as the fear gauge. All it, is, it just represents uncertainty. Uh, traders use this index to help them price options. And when this index is increasing, that means uncertainty is increasing. And that's usually associated with the pullback. 
Uh, and it's not, there's not so much a magical level to keep an eye on uh, with this index. You just want to monitor what the, what the recent trend has been. So as an example of that, when you look to the left-hand side of the chart I'll show you right here, uh, this shows where the VIX was going into the sort of February and March sell-off. It had hit right around that 20 level a couple of times. And then when we saw that big break above 20, that coincided with the sell-off that we saw uh, in the stock market. Right now, the key level I would be paying attention to is right around that 40, 40 to 45 area. Uh, if we see a move above that level uh, sustained, that would tell me that the selling pressure has come back. Uh, but if this keeps working its way lower, you want to keep kind of adjusting what that trend line is that, that you're looking at. But once again, this is another uh, early warning indicator that uh, some, some trouble, some, some sell-off and downside could be ahead for us. Clint, for those uh, viewers who may, not be, who, who may be aware of the VIX but not know how it's defined and constructed, can you just give us a brief rundown on, on how the VIX is calculated, what it actually tells us? Yeah, so VIX is actually something called implied volatility. Uh, it's using options on the S&P 500, and, and that's really all it is. It's looking at what that number is for the next 30 days, and then you, you annualize it, so it's what it looks like over the course of a full year. And, that, and that's all it's tracking. And once again, that's just how traders are, are using this index. It's like a, a plug figure to help them price S&P 500 options. And as, as, this, as uncertainty is increasing, this index increases, and, and the price of those options tend to increase as well. Now, um, that uncertainty, it doesn't necessarily imply that the next move is going to be down, does it? I mean, it's, it's basically, it's just that there is a potential, a big uh, move in, in, in price levels, but it doesn't really tell you which direction. That's right. Right. And then there's a saying that you know, stocks go up on an escalator, but come down on an elevator. And, you know, right. That's why you tend to see this uncertainty spike higher more often on the downside because the down moves we have in the market are, are usually much larger in, in magnitude and happen much quicker uh, than when we're seeing gains. So, right. So, so the, 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 the thing about the VIX is to it's telling you to be paired or be prepared rather for a big move, but it doesn't necessarily tell you which direction. And that's why it's so important to use additional indicators. And I, I thought I would run through a few of those now. Um, a, a couple of the, the ones that I like to use. Um, here's a chart that shows something called the accumulation distribution line. It's basically a measure, it's a cumulative measure of price change and volume change. And the, the critical thing about it is that it is something that you want to see moving in the same trend as the price level. Now, uh, I'm using the example of a robotics ETF. It's something that we recommended in the past. Um, but as you can see, for the last uh, five trading sessions, uh, there has been a decline in the accumulation distribution line, which means that Basically, the uptrend in price is weakening if you are taking into account the number of buyers uh, of that stock. So uh, that's a, a classic case. It's kind of like musical chairs. It's an example where other people have already sat down, um, you know, and you want to be not the one who's left uh, when it happens. I don't think robo is necessarily going to, 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 to go into a negative direction, so I'm not commenting on that. But I just wanted to show you the short term. Uh, here's another chart that shows the SPY, and, and here I wanted to you know, kind of also highlight the accumulation distribution line there where it begins to fall. Now, um, the, the tricky thing about this is because it's cumulative, it's hard to tell directionality from it over a longer term. So it's not quite as useful when you're looking at it over, say, three months or a year to date. Um, but it does give you a, an idea, uh, as you can see, that uh, it, it's the combination of selling plus volume that really tells you uh, who's buying and who's accumulating. Uh, and I think that's an important consideration for any stock that you hold because you can see this uh, on an individual basis. If you see this line going down but the price is still going up, that's a danger sign. It's kind of like uh, the VIX, right? I mean, it tells you that, 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 that somebody is uh, something's about to happen um, and the likelihood is that it's going to be a down leg. But there's a couple of other things here in this chart. One is, um, you know, the crossing of uh, moving averages. I know a lot of tra traders are aware of these, uh, but for novice traders, the, the Robin Hood crowd, uh, it's important to look. Um, sometimes it can sneak up on you that uh, the 50-day the moving average will cross, cross below the 200. That's a very negative sign under normal circumstances. Uh, in this case, I think it, it's a bit distorted by the rapidity of the, the fall that we saw in, in March. Uh, but the fact that, that we have tested it a couple of times uh, where that red line is, is wanting to come back up above the blue, the green line, 
Um, if it doesn't do that, if, it, if a couple of times it tests it, that tells you also that there's not positive sensitive, uh, sentiment in the market. The market wants to stay where it is. Uh, there are a couple of other things, RSI, you want that to be, um, you don't want, if, as soon as it gets above 70, you know the market's overbought, uh, people are probably going to pull back. As you can see, that happened uh, earlier this month when we hit uh, that, that, that level that I'm talking about, and then everybody you know, started backing off. So that's another indicator you can use. Uh, ideally, you want it to be uh, in, in low levels, uh, because that means it's safe to get in. The chances are that prices are going to rise from there. And then finally, the, there's the slow stochastic, which tells you similar things, but it's also when those lines cross, it gives you an indication that uh, there's a potential change coming. So we're not going into a great deal, detail about these, but these are all things that we use to try to tell the future. I mean, basically, it's, it's, it's the crystal ball in, in the toolkit. Um, they're not infallible. Um, but they can often help us. Um, so I know you've got a couple of examples of some um, uh, picks that we've made in the, in the last couple of months, um, and, and they've gone well for us. They've gone well for anybody who picked them. Tell us what you think based on these kinds of considerations, where they're headed next. Yeah, so I mean, for those that want to keep dancing as long as the music's playing and, and we're not seeing the, the warnings from some of these prior indicators, you know, there, there's a couple key sectors that we're watching for, for some important breakouts. And just to, to show you an example of what I mean by a breakout, the, the first chart ETF I want to show uh, is one of gaming stocks. This is GAMR is the ETF. Uh, this is something that I actually recommended in one of my Bauman Daily commentaries back in uh, late April. Uh, we're up about 20, 21% or so on that position. Since that time, it's almost double what the S&P's done uh, over that time frame. I want to highlight the, the breakout because that's what we were monitoring at the time, plus the gaming industry was seeing a, a surge in demand because of the social distancing and stay-at-home orders. Uh, so it was, was supported by the underlying fundamentals as well. What you can see is following the sell-off, now this chart goes back about six months or so, Following the sell-off, we had the rebound. Uh, the ETF came, the, the price came right back to that prior high and traded sideways just briefly. That's what I'm highlighting here uh, before then staging this breakout higher. Now, if you look at where that breakout occurred and just uh, look down the chart, you'll see the bars at the bottom. Right where that breakout was occurring, you see these two big green bars. That's a surge in volume. That helps solidify that the breakout's going to hold and that you're going to see uh, further gains in, in the days, weeks, or months ahead. And that's what we saw with gamers. So I, I think this is a, a great example of a breakout we saw. And there's two other ETFs, two other sectors that we've been discussing for a while now that are setting up similarly. Uh, one is in the housing sector. Uh, this looks at housing stocks using ITB. And similar to what you saw with the gaming ETF, we've come right back up to the, the prior highs before the sell-off. We've had this little sideways uh, period of consolidation. And so what I would look for here is a breakout above that recent consolidation and then taking out the, the prior highs with once again, seeing that surge in volume. You wanna see that volume pick up on that breakout uh, to help solidify, verify that it, it's gonna be lasting and that you're gonna see the, the better gains in, in the days and weeks ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, another ETF that I'll throw out there as well is, is the semiconductor space. Uh, we've talked a lot about the semiconductor space. Uh, we own several semiconductor stocks uh, in the Bauman letter portfolio. And right now, the CTF SMH is right back to the prior highs before the sell-off. And we've seen this, once again, a small period of consolidation uh, that looks like it's setting up to stage a key breakout here and would be monitoring for volume on that one as well. Right. Now, before we go on to discuss uh, strategies for trading in this kind of an environment uh, briefly, um, a couple of things to point out. One, I, I just want to make clear, because a lot of people have asked, uh, the housing stocks we talk about, residential construction. I think people get confused sometimes. It's really mainly the, um, the, the, the home builders. And if there's any one part of the economy that has um, achieved a V-shaped rebound, it's the housing, uh, residential construction sector. And it's almost entirely uh, multifamily housing. I mean, that is remarkable. And I just want to point out that in our Bauman letter, which you can subscribe to up here on the left, um, we have recommended a couple of positions in that sector, and that's been our logic all along, is that it's multifamily housing. Um, the other thing I, I just want to observe is it looks like there's kind of miniature cup and handle patterns there for semiconductors and housing stocks, which is another way that sometimes people use to try to identify a breakout. Um, that, that kind of upward movement, then a pause downward and, and back up higher. Uh, in the short term, not so much, but it, it is a good indication. 
Uh, and then the last thing I want to say, which is kind of a housekeeping issue, is I know there are a lot of Bauman Letter subscribers on the video. Um, when we make these recommendations, they're not officially part of our Bauman Letter portfolio. They are um, freebies. They're basically um, their general recommendations. So I know a lot of people have asked. We don't uh, track them officially. Um, it's free for, to you to make the decision. So Clint, how do we use this going forward? There are a lot of people here who are dancing, and there are a lot of new investors. Let's just take one or two minutes and uh, uh, talk about what's the best, what are the three things you want to do, I think, uh, in this market to make sure you make and keep your money? Sure. I think one of the things is to look for sort of those durable opportunities, those opportunities like in the housing sector that was supported by the earnings potential of those companies, but it was mispriced by the market. You know, Ted, you identified that one early on. Uh, you want to also look at industries that have secular tailwinds behind them. Uh, mm -hmm. Semiconductors is a great example there with, with the 5G build out, the, the networks, the smartphone cycle. Uh, there, there's a lot of, of things going into play that's boosting the semiconductor space. Mm -hmm. And then you can also look at industries that are being you know, accelerated, seeing accelerated change driven by the pandemic. And, and gaming is a great mm -hmm. example of that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the other thing to be aware of, you know, as long as the music's playing, it, it doesn't hurt to take profits along the way. Yeah. Uh, if, yep. if you've been able to participate and benefit in, in this rally that we've had, you don't have to sell your entire position, but there's nothing wrong with you know ringing the cash register from time to time and, and taking the gains that you've had uh, on those positions. And then from here on out, just look for those warning signs. Look for those warning signs that we've talked about uh, in this video. Look for signs that the, the trend has gone too far. You can you mentioned moving averages earlier. You, know, you can look at where the s and is at relative to its 200-day moving average. Mm -hmm. When it gets too far extended Beyond that, you know, it's like a, a rubber band that gets stretched too far and wants to snap back. So just keep keep an eye on those things. Keep an eye on how far we've gone uh, and keep an eye on what the, the breadth and what the participation looks like uh, if we continue to rally from here. Right. The only other thing I would add to that excellent list of uh, tactics to make sure you keep your money uh, is to diversify. Make sure that uh, you're not putting everything into one or two positions. Um, and particularly at this point, I think it's important to uh, look at not just the, 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 the undervalued stocks, which I know a lot of people have done, the people who bought the airlines, they bought uh, Hertz and all these other things, uh, but also to look at the undervalued stocks that are not yet uh, bankrupt and, and are not being smacked down uh, by uh, you know, massive disruption thanks to coronavirus. There are a lot of industries that suffer by contagion. Um, they're not actually uh, at risk themselves, but it, people think they are. And I think that a lot of, we see that in the REIT sector, the Re Real Estate Investment Trust, uh, a lot of companies that are uh, uh, associated with the breakdown in retail uh, are actually not threatened. I mean, there are different types of REITs. And if you go hunting around, you find them, buy them at a discount, and they're going to go up by 30, 40%, plus you're going to lock in great dividends. So there you have it from us this week. Remember uh, to subscribe to the Bauman Letter if you uh, are so minded. Um, we, uh, we are a, a paid newsletter, but uh, we are really focused on trying to help people make and keep their money. And I think that's one of the most important things for everybody to be doing because eventually the music will stop. Um, it hasn't happened as quickly as I thought, but uh, it just can happen. Uh, and it probably will happen, I think, given um, the nature of things these days. So that's it from us uh, this week. We'll talk to you again next week with Your Money Matters. Thank you. Thank you.